Hey everyone, and welcome to another deep dive. You know how sometimes work situations get tricky? Yeah, like when your own values clash with what's happening around you? We're gonna explore that today, especially for people in healthcare. Sounds pretty relatable. I think we've all had those moments where something at work just feels off. Yeah. Exactly. And this deep dive is all about figuring out how to stay true to yourself even when things get tough. We're using a research paper called Coaching and Personal Integrity in Challenging Organizations to guide us. So let's dive in. This paper really digs into that conflict we all feel sometimes. Like, how do you balance what you believe with what your workplace is doing, especially when ethics get murky? Right. And it feels like healthcare is a prime example. They're dealing with life or death stuff every day. So those yeah. ethical lines get blurry fast. Absolutely. Healthcare pros are always facing these huge systemic problems, inequality within their organizations, sometimes even straight up unfair treatment. It's tough out there. It's like they're being pulled in two directions. Their gut says one thing, but then there's this whole system with its own rules and, yeah, realities that they have to work within. No wonder they feel conflicted. That's where this idea of coaching comes in. Right. The research suggests it can give people a structured space to sort through those feelings without judgment. Oh, so like a safe space to vent and get it all out. It's more than just venting. Think of it as a sounding board, but with purpose. It helps you really untangle the mess of emotions and figure out what's causing that inner tension. I like that. So you're not just stewing in it. You're actually using those feelings to understand yourself better. Exactly. And through exercises like figuring out your core values, you start to define your non-negotiables, the stuff you absolutely won't compromise on. That makes sense. Like drawing a line in the sand saying, this is where I stand no matter what. That's a great way to put it. And yeah. it gives you a strong foundation to work from. But sometimes we need a little help seeing things from a different angle. Yeah, we can get stuck in our own heads. What does the paper say about getting a fresh perspective? That's where the coach steps in. They're trained to gently guide you towards new ways of thinking. So how does that actually work? Do they just tell you what to do? Oh, no. It's that. much more subtle than that. Yeah. They might have you journal about a workplace conflict, for example. Journaling. I wouldn't have thought of that for a work problem. But it's super helpful. Mm -hmm. By writing down your thoughts and feelings about a specific event, you might start to notice patterns. Like, oh, I always get upset when this happens type of thing. Exactly. Yeah. And that can reveal the values that are at the core of your conflict. The ones you might not even realize are driving your reactions. Sometimes just talking about a problem isn't enough. You need that deeper dive into your own thoughts to figure it all out. Right. It's like having a personal trainer for your values. They help you identify your strengths, see those potential weaknesses, and come up with a plan for handling tricky situations without losing yourself. So we're not just talking about feeling better. This is about taking action, making concrete changes. 100%. It's about giving healthcare professionals or anyone struggling with these dilemmas the tools of insights they need to actually make a difference. So whether that's speaking up for change at work or finding a whole new job that fits their values better, they're taking control of their careers and their lives. You got it. Yeah. And the research highlights two main outcomes from this coaching process. Lay it on me. Some people find that they can actually make a positive impact within their current role. Maybe they become a champion for a certain cause or just set a good example for their colleagues. Like finding a way to bring their personal compass in line with the direction of their work. Exactly. But others might realize that their values just don't match with their organization's actions at all. And for them, the most fulfilling path might be finding a new workplace where they can thrive. So coaching doesn't give everyone the same answer. It helps each person find the path that's right for them. Precisely. And that's where the idea of challenging yourself comes in. A good coach will push you a bit to step outside of your comfort zone and look at any beliefs that might be holding you back. I can see how that balance of support and challenge is key. You need the safe space, but also that nudge to help you grow. Exactly. It's about finding your own answers. Even if those answers are a little uncomfortable at first. I like that. It's not about fitting into some predetermined mold. It's about discovering your own path. Exactly. And that's why reflection is so important. Coaching gives you that structure to slow down, process your emotions, and really understand what you want out of life. So it's not just reacting in the heat of the moment. It's about taking that step back and thinking it through. Right. A coach might have you ask yourself some tough questions. Like, what are you willing to compromise on? What are your absolute non-negotiables? And what kind of impact do you want to have on the world? Those are some heavy hitting questions, but it sounds like they're essential for figuring out which direction to go in. They are. And they can bring up that feeling of being overwhelmed. 
especially when you're dealing with these huge systemic issues that feel way bigger than you. Yeah, it's easy to feel powerless in those situations. How does coaching help with that? That's a fantastic question. And something the research talks about directly. It's totally natural to feel overwhelmed when facing complex systems that seem impossible to change. Mm. But coaching gives you a framework to navigate those complexities without losing sight of your own values. So like a compass to help you find your way through the wilderness of ethical dilemmas. I love that analogy. Yeah. It's about acknowledging those big issues, but focusing on what you can control. What choices can you make even within a flawed system to stay true to yourself? It's about finding that inner strength even when things are tough. Precisely. And that's what coaching really boils down to. It reminds us that we're not just passive bystanders in our own lives. We have the power to make choices that shape our careers and align with our deepest values, even in imperfect systems. So this applies to way more than just healthcare, right? Anyone who's wrestling with these ethical questions at work can use these ideas. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. This research focused on healthcare, but the themes are universal. Whether you're a teacher, an artist, an entrepreneur, or anything else, the struggle to stay true to yourself is something we all face. It's like a universal toolkit for navigating the human experience. I love that. Yeah. It really is. And it all starts with that inner journey of self-discovery. This deep dive has been so insightful. It feels like we've only just scratched the surface, though. It really is a deep dive. Yeah. And we've been exploring some pretty profound concepts today. I know, right? And it all comes back to that idea of self-discovery as the foundation for everything else. But let's bring this back to the paper. It mentions a really compelling case study a healthcare professional who's struggling with organizational inequalities and feeling that tension between their personal integrity and the actions of their workplace. That's right. This individual was witnessing some pretty significant unfair treatment within the system and felt deeply conflicted about how to proceed. It's a situation I imagine resonates with a lot of people, not just in healthcare. So mm -hmm. how did coaching help this person navigate that challenging situation? Coaching helped them unpack that feeling of being stuck between a rock and a hard place. They were able to explore different avenues for addressing the issues, while also acknowledging the realities of working within a large, complex organization. So it wasn't about finding the perfect solution, but about equipping them with the tools to make their own informed decisions. Exactly. Through coaching, they were able to pinpoint the specific values that were causing the most conflict. This clarity helped them develop a plan of action that felt authentic and empowering, whether that meant speaking up, advocating for change within the organization, or ultimately choosing a different path that better aligned with their beliefs. So they were able to reclaim that sense of ownership over their career, even in a challenging environment. Absolutely. And that's a key takeaway here. Coaching empowers you to act with greater integrity, even when faced with tough choices. It's not about offering easy answers or quick fixes. It's about providing a framework for making those choices with more confidence and clarity. It's almost like having a roadmap guiding you through those tricky ethical dilemmas. I like that analogy. But just like a roadmap, there can be multiple routes to the same destination. And in this case, the destination is finding a way to work and live in a way that feels aligned with your core values. And the paper suggests that there are two main paths that people might find themselves taking after going through this coaching process, right? Staying within the organization and working towards change from the inside, or choosing to pursue a different path altogether. That's right. Some individuals might discover that they can make a real difference within their current roles. Perhaps they feel empowered to speak up about injustices, to advocate for new policies, or simply to lead by example and inspire others to do the same. It's like finding a way to be the change you want to see in the world, but within the context of your current job. Exactly. But for others, coaching might reveal that their values are simply too fundamentally misaligned with the actions and culture of their organization. Mm. And in those cases, the most fulfilling path forward might involve seeking out a new environment where they can truly thrive. So it's not about forcing people into a specific mold, but about helping them figure out which path best reflects their own unique needs and aspirations. Exactly. And that's the beauty of coaching. It recognizes that there's no one-size-fits-all solution. It's about giving you the tools to make those tough decisions with more self-awareness and intention. That's so empowering. And I think it's a message that resonates far beyond just healthcare professionals. Mm. Anyone who's ever felt that inner tug of war between their own values and the realities of their workplace can benefit from these insights. I completely agree. 
Whether you're a teacher navigating ethical dilemmas in the classroom, an entrepreneur struggling to build a business that reflects your values, or anyone in between the principles we've been discussing today can be applied to a wide range of situations. It's like a universal guide to finding that sweet spot where your work and your values can coexist in harmony. That's beautifully put. It's about finding that alignment, that sense of congruence between who you are and what you do. Okay, this has been such an insightful conversation, but I'm curious what happens after that initial aha moment? How do people actually translate those insights into real lasting change? The paper mentions the importance of finding that balance between action and reflection. Can you elaborate on what that looks like in practice? Of course. Yeah. It's not enough to just think about your values. You have to actively integrate them into your daily life and your decision-making processes. And that's where the ongoing work comes in. So it's like a muscle you have to keep flexing. The more you practice aligning your actions with your values, the stronger that muscle becomes. That's a great way to think about it. And a good coach will help you develop a personalized workout routine, so to speak with specific exercises and strategies for strengthening that muscle. So it's about finding that rhythm between introspection, taking the time to check in with yourself and make sure you're on track, and outward action, actually making those choices that reflect your values in the real world. You've got it. And it's a continuous process, not a one-time fix. There will be setbacks, moments of doubt, and times when it feels easier to just go with the flow. But coaching provides that ongoing support and accountability to help you stay the course. It's like having a personal cheerleader in your corner, reminding you of your goals and encouraging you to keep pushing forward even when it gets tough. Exactly. And that's why coaching can be such a powerful tool for creating lasting change, both personally and professionally. This has been so enlightening. It feels like we've unlocked this whole new level of understanding about how to navigate those tricky, ethical waters and stay true to ourselves even when the world around us feels chaotic. But before we get too carried away, Let's take a moment to really let all of this sink in. We'll be right back with some final thoughts and a challenge for you to take on as you continue your own journey of self-discovery. We're back and ready to keep exploring this idea of staying true to yourself at work. And to really bring this home, I wanna talk about what happens after those aha moments, you know, when you finally realize what your values truly are. How do people actually put those insights into action? That's the million dollar question, right? It's one thing to have that self-awareness, but actually making changes in your life, that's where the real work begins. So it's not a one and done kind of thing. You're constantly checking in with yourself, making sure your actions are matching up with your values. Exactly, it's an ongoing process. And the research actually highlights the importance of finding that balance between taking action and taking time to reflect. So it's like you need both, right? right? You can't just think about your values, you have to actually do something about it. But you also can't just go charging ahead without stopping to think things through. You nailed it. It's about finding that rhythm between those two things, action and reflection. Okay, I'm starting to get it. Yeah. But can you break that down a bit more? What does that actually look like in real life? Sure. So let's say you've gone through the coaching process and you've identified those core values that are super important to you. The next step is figuring out how to actively integrate those values into your everyday life. So it's like a muscle you have to work out. The more you use it, the stronger it gets. That's a fantastic analogy. <laughs> and just like with physical exercise, you need a plan, a routine to follow. A good coach will help you develop personalized strategies for strengthening that values muscle, so to speak. So it's about finding that sweet spot between looking inward, making sure you're on track, and then taking action in the outside world, making choices that reflect those values. You got it. <laughs> and it's important to remember that this isn't a quick fix. It's a continuous journey. There will be times when you slip up, have doubts, or just feel like giving up. Those are the times when having a coach in your corner can be super helpful, right? Someone to remind you of why you started this whole process in the first place. Absolutely. Yeah. A coach provides that ongoing support and accountability to help you stay focused on your goals, hmm. even when things get tough. It's like having a personal cheerleader rooting for you every step of the way. That's a great way to put it. And that's why coaching can be such a powerful tool for creating lasting change, both in your personal life and your career. This has been so helpful. It feels like we've unlocked this whole new understanding of how to navigate those tricky ethical situations and stay true to ourselves. But before we wrap up completely, I want to take a moment to let all of this sink in. We'll be back in a flash with some final thoughts and a challenge for you to consider as you continue on your own journey of self-discovery. All right, we're back. And you know, after all that talk about finding those aha moments and putting your values into action, I think it's time to bring this home for you listening right now. 
So knowing what we've covered about staying true to yourself at work, what are some steps you can take today to see if you're actually on a path that feels fulfilling? That's the question, isn't it? And it's a big one. There's no easy answer. But I think a good starting point is to think back to those key takeaways we've talked about. Okay, so like revisiting those aha moments, the ones where you realize, oh, this value is non-negotiable for me. Exactly. Start there. And then ask yourself how those values are playing out in your current job. Where do things feel aligned? And where's that friction? Where do your values in your work just not seem to mesh? That makes sense. It's about finding those points of alignment and also those areas where things feel a bit off. Right. And here's the big question, the one that might make you squirm a little. If you could magically change one thing about your work life to make it better fit your values, what would it be? Ooh, that's a good one. And I bet it's not always easy to answer. It takes some serious mm, introspection. Yeah, it does. It takes courage to be honest with yourself about what's working and what's not. Yeah. But it's worth it, I promise. And if someone's feeling stuck trying to figure all this out on their own, a coach can help, right? Absolutely. A coach can give you that outside perspective, mm -hmm. help you see those blind spots that we all have, and guide you towards a path that feels more authentic. This whole deep dive has been so eye-opening. I feel like I have a whole new toolkit for navigating those tricky ethical situations and staying true to myself at work. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. And remember, this is just the beginning. The real work starts now as you take these insights and figure out how they apply to your life. So true. To everyone listening, thank you for joining us on this journey of self-discovery. Remember, you have the power to create a more fulfilling and meaningful work life for yourself. Keep exploring, keep questioning, and never stop trying to live your values. We'll be back soon with another fascinating topic to dive into. Until then, happy reflecting. <laughs>